Hi there. Happy Sunday. Uh, it's still morning, but by the time this gets uploaded, I doubt it will be any longer. So good morning and afternoon to you. Um, I had a scripture that I wanted to share today, and it comes from the book of Micah, chapter 4. This is kind of one of my favorite passages. Um, has such hope to it. And uh, there's a parallel passage in Isaiah chapter 2. These are mountain of God images. These are all over the book of Isaiah and get used um, and alluded to in the New Testament as well. And they're, they're images of, of hope, images of the future, images of God's kingdom. And uh, here, and actually in Isaiah 2, what I love about this passage is that everything is kind of a mess. Like everything is a mess. Um, it's in in the context of exile and judgment, and the people having made a mess of things, the leaders having made a mess of things, outside pressure from from hostile nations, and in the middle of that, standing um, as a note of hope is a hope hope that doesn't necessarily take away all the crazy, but hope that helps people get through it and make sense of it and live into something new in the midst, that's what these passages are. So I'm going to read this selection from, from Micah 4. Everything in Micah 4 is amazing, uh, but there's a few verses in particular that I want to focus on for this morning. So uh, Micah chapter 4, starting in verse 1. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and peoples will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion. The word of the Lord will go from Jerusalem. He will judge between many peoples and will settle disputes for strong nations far and wide. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Every man will sit under his own vine and under his own fig tree. And here's the verse I want to highlight today. And no one will make them afraid. For the Lord Almighty has spoken. All the nations may walk in the name of their gods. We will walk in the name of the Lord, our God, forever and ever. And the, that last line in, in particular is really compelling, is that uh, all the nations, everybody else may do something different than these words, but we will walk in the ways of our Lord forever. And the, the mountain of the Lord, what it does is it shows us what his ways are. It is the, the beating of swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. It, it's the destruction of chaos, the things that, that bring chaos and, and destruction and division, um, the things that are used as weapons of oppression. It's getting rid of that stuff. It's learning to live in new ways, learning to walk in peace, learning to have justice and, and equ um, equity between peoples. Uh, it's learning to have fair judgments and discernment. That's his ways. And in, in Isaiah 2, the, the ending is a slight bit different. Um, and Isaiah says at the ending of, his, of that passage, he says, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. So it's like on, on both sides of the Isaiah 2 passage, there's like chaos and stuff's falling apart and things don't go well <laughs> for the people of Israel in, in the book of Isaiah. But come, let us walk in the ways of our Lord. I know this isn't how it is right now, but this is the way of the Lord. This is the light of the Lord. Come, let's do this together. And Micah, other nations may not do this. Other people may not, may not do this, but we're going to do it. We're going to look towards God's ways. We're going to look towards the future and start to bring the, those future realities in today, into today. And I think that's what it means to be people of the kingdom of God. Now, the passage that I really wanted to focus on, and that's that verse that I highlighted earlier, uh, starting in verse 4, that every man or every person will sit under their own vine and under their own fig tree, and no one will make them afraid, for the Lord Almighty has spoken. 
I love that image that's so like beautiful of sitting under your own vine and fig tree. I mean, we live in a society of scarcity in many ways, in a world where people are afraid and they bite and grab and pull and fight to get things that they need, things that they want. Um, and and we, we have great disparities between the haves and the have-nots in many ways. And and in part, it's because some some people have been pushed down so much, and some people just have chaos in their lives, and they can't like acquire the things that they need. But the the vision of our Lord is that everyone would have what they need. Everyone would have a vine and a fig tree. They would have they would have fruit. They would have sustenance. They would have shelter from the elements, and none, no one would make them afraid. Uh, how much of the image? images in Micah 4 and Isaiah 2 are images of of God coming and bringing his justice so that the sword and the spear are not needed anymore so that the nations don't have to go to war so that people don't have to fight and scratch and um, you know kill each other to get what they need that is the kingdom of God that is God's vision for humanity that we would live in in peace with one another and and so as we live and sit in the time right now where there's lots of fear, there's, there's fears over things happening um, in our society, around the globe, there's fear of the pandemic, <laughs> there's, there's fear of social unrest and um, fears of, of like things happening with, with the climate and wildfires and earthquakes and, you know, just chaos all around. We've got a lot to be afraid of. We've, we can be afraid financially, like that our money's not going to last. We got, we got fears over our physical health and our, um, our livelihoods, and, and it's easy to fall into fear. But what God is, is calling us to be um, are to be people that live into the reality of his kingdom and, and become um, people that bring about this vision. And so... Like right now, I know I can't fix the pandemic. I can't fix the world. I can't fix all the racial inequalities in our society. I can't fix everything that's broken and that makes everybody afraid. But in the relationships that I have, I can take steps to reduce people's fear. I can take steps to bring peace. I can take steps to help heal brokenness um, with, with my words, with my actions, with repentance of my own and helping to call other people to repentance. I, and I think that this is where our God allows us to be led by the Spirit, to be people who are, who are creative, because the Bible is not just like a, a blueprint for um, every circumstance in our lives. Instead, it's, it's um, enlivened by the Spirit so that we see how God has worked in the past and how he desires the future to look. And then he says, here, now where you are, I want you to live this out. Here's my spirit breathed into you, the spirit of the kingdom, the spirit of life, the spirit of peace. Take that spirit in you and go go improvise, you know? Go and figure out uh, how to reduce fear. Go figure out how to bring peace. Blessed are the peacemakers. So I don't know what your station in life is. I know right now some of us are just like really cooped up. Some of us are essential workers. We got to be out there, you know, uh, no, some of us have never like really quarantined in the first place because of our jobs. Um, some people are completely isolated right now and they're, and the, the range is everywhere in between. And, you know, some of us may not feel like there's much that we can do for the kingdom. But I think it's, we make it too hard sometimes. Find someone, some way today to do a little part, to do a little piece, to remove fear from someone, to, to be a gentle voice, to be someone of compassion and love, um, to offer an encouraging word, to, to intervene, to step into a situation that you know is messed up and people are getting hurt, to speak up for the vulnerable. I mean, there's all kinds of things, and I can't tell you what all those things are, but that's the beauty and the joy of living in the Spirit of God, is that, that our God has all kinds of ideas of create, creativity and life and health that he wants to bring into this world, and we get to partner with him in that and listen for his voice and his leading. So... That's what I'm encouraging you today to do today is to, to 
probably go and read these verses in Micah 4. Go to Isaiah 2 and read them there. Um, and let your mind be uh, opened and flowing with, a, with spirit-led imagination for how you can put these words into effect in your world, in your life, in your relationships. And then when we start to do that together... Um, there's this beautiful thing that happens. Change happens. Justice happens. Life happens. And that, I think, pleases our God greatly. And it's in that that we bear his image in this world. So these are my reflections today. I send all my love to all of you, and I look forward to hearing testimonies and stories of how these words are being put into action. Take care, friends. Bye-bye.